viewers, my name is Dr. Ken De Makinde of Tokmak Pharma Center. And today, uh, with us in the house, is Mr. Austin. Please, can we meet you? Yeah, my name is Austin Dalio. I'm the GM Sales and Marketing for Premier Fit here in Nevada. And uh, we market a top fit brand across the Nigerian 36 states and uh, the FCT. And we've been doing this over the years. We are one of the leading brands in the poultry industry, the fish feed. And we also produce ruminal feed, both the large animals and the small animals. Beautiful. Uh, if you are in the poultry industry, uh, you know that uh, that name, Mr. Hosting, will ring bell because he's one of the foremost uh, uh, men that have built this industry, especially when it comes to chicken feed. He has the privilege of working with uh, quite a number of very uh, formidable companies uh, in Nigeria. Uh, having said that, uh, Mr. Austin, please, uh, what do you see as the future of poultry industry in Nigeria? Yeah, the poultry uh, production in Nigeria feature is very, very bright. Bright in the sense that uh, very soon we will need to, to, to look for sunglasses to be able to see clearly why am i saying this i'm saying this because of the opportunities that lies ahead of us we are a country with over 200 million people with a huge uh, youthful uh, population of about 60 percent of the population so we need we, we need we need we need food security we, in food security we need uh, nutrition and uh, the cheapest nutrition today is the source is from chicken either egg or meat because we, if, 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 you, if you compare the prices per kg for, 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 for beef and a chicken, you will see that chicken is very, very cheaper. Mm -hmm. So in that uh, aspect, you expect that um, the poultry industry, we are still just scra scratching Scratch. the, opportun the opportunities. I'll give you some instance. Today in Nigeria, averagely, we're doing 2 kg per head per annum for, for poultry meat which shows that we are, our meat consumption is the lowest in, in Africa, one of the lowest in Africa. Mm -hmm. If you go to Kenya, you go to South Africa, they are doing about 67 to 80 per, per, per kg per, 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 per head per annum. Mm -hmm. So in, in essence, an average Nigerian eat one chicken in the whole year. Mm -hmm. So we can do much better than that. If we're able to double that, for instance, to four kg, that means we will double our feed consumption, we will double our farm, we will double everything we are doing today. So you can see the opportunity. And we need to grow to meet with our peers. At least minimum we should be able to do like uh, 50 kg per head per annum. If we are able to do that, it shows that our middle class will have expanded, our disposable income will have increased, our unemployment will have reduced, because it is people who has money that will be able to afford to buy this uh, chicken or to buy meat and uh, be able to live uh, 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 a standard that is acceptable by, 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 by society. So uh, poultry production in Nigeria has a huge opportunity. If you look at in the past three, four years, a year on year, we've, we've not grown. We've been losing because of what? Because of high cost of of maize, okay. high, high cost of raw materials, high cost of feed, as a result of the, the currency devaluation, as a result of uh, uh, COVID-19, as a result of uh, the Nara redesign, as a result of the high forest exchange. So all those indices have made poultry to become inactive because when citizens don't have resources, they will not be able to afford. And when price of uh, uh, feed goes up, some farmers feel either they reduce their size and some smallholders they stop. So the, the entire poultry industry is being the majority of the smallholder farmers. Mm. They are the majority. So if anything, any shock that comes, it's difficult for them to withstand, they drop. Mm. And they close and say, look, any time I'm ready, the structures are there. Any time they're ready, they go back again. So this stop, start, stop, start, stop. Have not been able to help us to grow and again the disposable income and the huge army of unemployed youths that we have if they if they don't have resources there's no way they can afford to buy chicken and eat every day 
So those are just the, 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 the brutal facts. Mm. So from, from mm. what you said, I can see that uh, the co high cost of uh, raw materials like maize and soya uh, is a big challenge. So wh how do you think we can mitigate this? As, uh, is, there a, a, is there a part that local farmers in Nigeria can play? Yes. Uh, first and foremost, if we really want to grow um, our poultry industry, it has to start from our farming practice. Take for instance, two crops will determine the future of poultry in Nigeria, maize and soya. Without maize, maize constitutes about 50% of the feed ingredient, while soya constitutes about uh, 20 to 25, depending on whether you're doing And I like that Nigeria product. has one of the best soya. In the we world. have, because ours is still a genetic, a, a, a generic uh, uh, soya, it's not a GMO. So it commands, uh, in terms of nutrition, if you look at the nutritional profile, our soya will give you about uh, 46 minimum protein and uh, up to 50, it depends on uh, the process. In order, in order, other uh, protein sources don't get up to that level. So we are saying that if we really want to, to grow poultry production in Nigeria, we must increase our yield in terms of productivity for maize. We need to support the farmers with fertilization. We need to uh, bring uh, back the extension service so that farmers should be able to cultivate and get information about a, uh, fertilization application in terms of planting, in terms of rainfall patterns. And then um, we need also security because in most of the farming communities today, uh, have been the, their major challenge is these uh, flannies uh, attacks on some communities. So we need to address those issues. If those issues are addressed, I can assure you Nigerians are ready to farm. And same goes to with uh, with uh, soya beans. So if we're able to increase our yield, we're able to to to, to cultivate more land and uh, uh, harvest these materials. We'll be able to use enough in the country, and then we'll be able to to export. Don't forget for maize, we have maize for human and maize for feed. Mm -hmm. So maize for feed at the moment, we don't really need more than 5 million tons per annum. But for the human consumption, we will need a minimum of uh, 9 to 10 million tons. And we, year on year, we've been cultivating maize. It's just last year, it was between about 12 million tons. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to, to move away from this 12 million to beginning to arrive at 15 and then 20, 25, 30 million tons a year. Because with the African Continental Trade Agreement, a lot of uh, our neighbors within the sub-region sub will always come to buy food from Nigeria for many factors. Number one, we have the capacity. Number two, sometimes our currency, because of the devaluation, the safer is stronger. Don't forget that we are surrounded by all uh, francophone states. So they will come here and then if their currencies are stronger, our goods become cheaper for them. So they will buy food from us and take back and, 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 and take because with the African trade, um, okay. uh, trade agreement, we are expected that it should be all borders will collapse <coughs> and then we farm produce within the region should be able to move from one area to another and then anything you produce within the region should be able to move from one state or one country to the other not imports but locally produced hmm. so in other words what you are saying is that uh, the issue of subsidy if farmers can get subsidy we will go a long way in nigeria you know uh, subsidies is uh, are controversial issues because most times they are not well managed. If you look at the petroleum subsidy, one of the reasons is that uh, we were paying so much money out for subsidy and then we were not able to account for those monies that have been paid because the, the management of the subsidy regime has been a big challenge to the government. And now the wise thing they've done is to withdraw the subsidy. But let me tell you when it comes to agriculture, we cannot be successful in agriculture without subsidy. And that's why if you look at the banking sector, they don't even finance agricultural productivity. When it comes to anything agriculture or poultry or anything, the banks are not friends 
to agriculture. Mm. But what we need to do is that the government must take a deliberate step yeah. by intervening in agriculture. Number one, fertilizer. fertilizer. Number two, extension service. Number three, it will make knowledge, mechanization, mechanization knowledge, and then technology. Right now, technology is driving agriculture all over the world. Many farmers will just we just go and cultivate the land. We don't know when the rain will fall. We don't know what is the rain pattern. We don't know when the rain will finish. Will finish. So, but this is this time we should be able to. Uh, the, the, there are there, there, there are softwares that can uh, that can be linked so that you will know when the rain is start, rains is start, and when it's going to finish, and then you what what sort of volume of rain you are expecting, so that you know what crop to plant. For instance, our soil. How many times do we test the soil and know that what is the soil deficient, in, so that you know what fertilizer to use. All those things we need to. The gov we need government intervention because the average uh, local person will not be able to afford this. And that's why you see our farms are still in their primitive, primitive uh, way. We're still cultivating with hoe and uh, uh, all kinds of uh, local materials. But we need to begin to move to the next step of agriculture. And what is the next step? We need technology. We need uh, government subvention or uh, uh, subsidies to subsidize even the loan. Banks should be they should be banks of agriculture deliberately meant to support agri, agri ventures. This is what Nigeria needs. And then if you look at the, our processes in the agriculture, there's a lot of waste. And who bears this waste? The farmer. Mm. Sometimes he makes it, sometimes he doesn't make it. He goes back and every year, year on year. In, in other climate, farmers are the richest people in the community. So we must make farming attractive for Nigerians to go back to farming. We must make farming uh, uh, attractive to the young people. Because in some communities, you go here and see the people that are farming. Some of them are in their 70s. And the young people are not ready because it's not attractive for them. How do you attract young people into agriculture? We need to do that as a nation. And that's the way we will be able to break some of these barriers. Nigeria should be exporting things, not raw material. We should be exporting finished products or at least a semi value addition through processing and other things. In the 60s, our parents were cocoa was exported from here uh, in its raw form. Why would you? We should be able to make bombita or make whatever product from cocoa, chocolate, and, and export them out. Why should we be exporting raw material at this at this time of the, our development? Our yes. grandparents did that. We at our own generation we shouldn't. We should not. Yes. Yeah. That, that, anyway, that, that observation is good, and I and I do hope that uh, this new administration uh, will be willing uh, to do something new. Now let, let's talk about tough fit. As the GM marketing uh, of tough fit, what are the plans that you think tough fit has in stock? to ensure that uh, the post industry continue to, to survive. Yeah, uh, uh, Top Fit, as we all know, is one of the leading brands in the industry and one of the oldest uh, brand that we have. If you recall, Top Fit started in 1968 in, uh, in Sapele, in Delta State. And this brand has been around for this uh, number of years. And striving, and it has gone through a lot of ups and downs in the Nigerian economy, but it has withstand uh, all those challenges. And uh, the recent challenges, right from uh, uh, the, uh, 2020, when we had the bed flu, and then after the bed flu, we had uh, the devaluation of the currency, and then we we had. Uh, preparation for elections where people were scared. Nigeria was going to war. Elections are over. Farmers were not ready to to take on uh, to stock new beds because they, they were, were not sure what we were going into. And then in January this year, we saw the the Nara redesign, where price of eggs from 2,000 a crate came to as low as 800, 900 naira a crate. So the potatoes have gone through a lot of challenges. And then the high cost of maize, and the high cost of feed, smallholder farmers all, a lot of them left. We lost the industry, lost over 30% of the small farmer holders. And they constitute the, 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 the largest number of farmers. 
So with all these things, yet poultry remains. Poultry can never go down. For us in Premier Feed, we understand the challenges of poultry. We've gone through it over the years and we're still standing. What, I foresee, what we're doing in poultry feed is to improve in terms of technology, so, uh, technology to, to be able to use local ingredients in Nigeria. So what we're doing, we have an innovation center where we, we're running a lot of trials using getting some of these local materials in Nigeria so that we can become part of our feed uh, formulation. The other aspect we're also doing is that we're also bringing in some new technology equipment to improve the cooking time for the broiler feed. <clears throat> the broiler feed, we must understand that when you give uh, uh, broilers a mass feed, which is not, does the process of mass feed and crumbs or pellets are different. So the crumbs and pellets, it undergoes a cooking process. And that cooking process, that's where the technology is. So that when the best takes such a feed, it should be able to convert it into, into meat easily or into the body growth of the bird because it is pre-cooked. In that process, the 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 the, 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 the quality of the feed improves because if there are any germs in that cooking process they will die. Mm -hmm. So the feed becomes more hygienic, the feed becomes more palatable for the birds and then it is the, the, the digestibility of the feed in in the animal becomes more easier and then the FCR increases of the bed. So in that process, that technology is what we have been going, we've been doing all over the, the, the few, uh, few, few, few periods that passed and we've gotten it right. Wow. Now, in the, I encourage farmers during this uh, season that they will start preparing to stock for the Christmas, let them try top feed and they will see the results. Definitely. You should be able to get, uh, if you're using the broiler plus, you should be able to get uh, 1.8 to 2 kg within uh, five weeks which is at two that five days max. This is a, a, a promise and then our sales guys through our GTM go to market through training activities are educating the farmers to also understand our feeding regime. The feeding regime is just simple, just follow the what our sales guys in the field will be doing, discussing with the farmers. So for instance a farmer takes a, a day old chick I will expect that each farmer should be able to weigh your day old chicks. Minimum, you should be able to take a day old chick between 38 and 40 grams. That should be a healthy bed. And then we, you, you, you begin to monitor the first seven days, which we call the, we call it the, 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 the early gains. Because if you miss those early gains, it's difficult for the bed to be able to recover. So that seven days is very critical, very critical. for the bed's growth. So we make sure that you, you give it our feet, the, the Brola Super Starter Crumbs, you know, which is um, a plus. The pro line. Uh, the professional, no, the other, yeah, we call it pro, the professional line, uh, Brola Plus. You give to the bed, we monitor it with this seven days that you will see. You see some from 40 gram will grow as high as 114, 115, 118, even 120 grams within that short period. So that, if you follow that, you'll be able to see that on a weekly basis, on a daily basis or weekly basis, you're, you're, you're checking the weight of the bed, you will begin to see the improvement. And then make sure that you give the bed good water, the same water you drink, or at least with very good water. Don't just say they are chicken, you can give them anything. No, you have to give them good water. Make sure they have good environment, good ventilation. The housing is good, uh, it's warm. That's it. Wow. Viewers, we've heard so much about uh, our GM. I want to assure you that all the feed that you talk about, both the layer rations and blur rations, they are available at uh, Totma Farmer Center, Depot. We are one of the accredited distributors uh, in Nigeria especially here in Ogo State, where we have branches at uh, Ifo Arigbajo Center. We have another center at uh, Ota. We have another one at uh, Aton or Kyoreasis uh, along in Diruko. And of course, you can also reach us through our website, www.farmacenter.com.ng, where you can just uh, place your order online. And uh, because we are here, 
uh, to meet all your needs. I would assure you that you will get all these uh, products that you have talked about. But of, of importance is the, uh, the Broiler Plus that he mentioned. Just ensure that you ask for Broiler Plus. It's a professional line of uh, top fit and uh, he's here to stay. Uh, with uh, and the price is also very very competitive you get value for your money and you get a good report at the end of the day mr austin we want to thank you a pleasure a we pleasure. do hope that you will always come around sure. when sure. we call you sure. to talk to our farmers a pleasure thank you always a pleasure to be around farmers all right thank you mm. have a great day